All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's session of the basic Hebrew lesson for the Bible study Hickory on this 18th day of December 2022. And um, now, and I think uh, the Dean will probably say something about this a little bit later, but um, we are not going to be having the Bible study uh, next week, uh, the 25th of December, uh, given that um, that is, of course, going to be uh, Christmas. So we will be, um, we won't be joining next Sunday in order to allow everyone to spend uh, time with uh, their families and friends over the Christmas holidays, but uh, we will get together uh, next, uh, the Sunday following that. So taking a look here then, last week we were walking our way through Genesis chapter 22. And just as a refresher as to where we are with this. So Genesis 22, this is the passage where the Lord says to Abraham, take your son to the mountain and offer him there as a sacrifice. And we had gotten through the first two verses uh, last week. So, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And so we had taken a look at that on at those two verses last Sunday. Now we're here at verse three. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for a burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. So taking a look at this verse here and that's the English text. Now let's come on down here and we'll take a look at the Hebrew. And let me see if I can make that a little bit larger here. So that's just going to zoom in on that a little bit. All right. So notice here with respect to verse three. So we have then, Wayashakim Avraham Baboker. So, and then coming on down to the next clause. So just taking a look at this. Now, notice right on the front of this particular word, so on the front of Wayash came, you can see that we do have the wow consecutive, wow with the pathak followed by a dagash forte. We had previously talked about the two main conjunctions that we have in Hebrew, one of them being the wow conjunctive. It looks like this, basically that vertical line with the two dots underneath it. So we call this that idea of the wow conjunctive. And this particular conjunction, it can join to any part of speech and it indicates simply that two grammatical items are being joined together. But then we also have this down here, wow with the pathak followed by a dagash forte which is what we call the wow consecutive. And so this particular conjunction, the wow consecutive, and you can even hear it in the name of it, consecutive, you can hear the word sequence in there. This wow consecutive indicates not only that two things are being joined together, but also that there is a type of sequence. This happened, then this happened, then this happened. 
And this while consecutive can only join two verbs. And so as a result then, given that I have a while consecutive here, while with a pathic followed by a doggish forte, I know that this particular word to which it is joined, yes, came, is going to be a verb. And because of the fact that this while with a pathic followed by a doggish forte, is the form that the while consecutive takes on an imperfect verb, I know too that the letter in which the dogash forte is, so that dot right there, that dot, that dogash forte is going to be inside of the what we call the imperfect preformative. Remember that there are two aspects in four Hebrew verbs one of which is called the perfect, which indicates completed action, and then the other one is the imperfect, which, in, which indicates incomplete action. And so this here, this imperfect performative, it indicates incomplete action. We're dealing with an imperfect verb. There are four imperfect preformatives that will join to the beginning of a word, and we can use the mnemonic device athon in order to remember them. So this here, the aleph, indicates that the verb is first common singular. The noon would indicate that the verb is first common plural. The yod would indicate third ma that the verb is either third masculine, singular, or plural. And the tau would indicate that it could be anything else. That is second masculine, singular, or plural, second feminine, singular, or plural, or third feminine, singular, or plural. I have the yod here, which lets me know that this particular verb is either going to be third masculine, singular, or third masculine, plural. To tell the difference, I look to the end of the verb to see if there is a U-class vowel. That is either a kibbutz or a shurik at the end of the triliteral root. We have neither here, so I know this is going to be third person, third masculine, singular here. Then I also see that our imperfect preformative is pointed with a pathak. Now, the reason that that is significant, as I can show you when I come back up here to, and I'm sorry, I was looking at something else in this particular document. Let me get up to the right place. But um, this particular verb paradigm, it's taken from um, Pratico Van Pelt. So again, that red grammar book that I showed you a couple of weeks ago. And now notice the way that this is set up. Along the side here, you can see that we have um, the perfect verbs with their person, gender, and number, the imperfect verbs. And as you go down this, you can see that we do have those imperfect performatives, the yod, the tau, the olive, and the noon. And then the person and numbers there, respectively. And then across the top, we have the different stems. Remember that the stems in Hebrew indicate those types of actions. So the cal would indicate basic action. The nifel would be the passive of the cal. So basically, cal, I broke the plate. Nifel, the plate was broken by me. Pl is going to be intensive action. So I shattered the plate. Pu'al is going to be the passive of the peel, so thus the plate was shattered by me. Hifil, causative action, I caused the plate to break. Hofal is going to be the passive of the hifil, the plate was caused to be broken by me. And then the hifpa'il is reflexive action, where the subject is both doing and receiving the action, the plate broke itself. So now notice as we go down through all of this, all of the, each of these stems, the cal, the nifal, the piel, the puel, the hifil, the hofal, and the hifpael, when we come down to the imperfect, they all have those, imper those same imperfect performatives that we've been talking about, the olive, the yod, the tau, and the noon. But the difference is that the way that the imperfect performative is pointed is different. So notice here, when we come to the cal, the imperfect performatives, as, as you look down, they're all pointed with a hierarch, with the exception of the first common singular, the olive there, and that's just because of, um, for the sake of pronunciation there, of the olive. So thus you have the cal imperfect performative pointed with the hierarch. 
The nifl being the passive of the cal, that imperfect performative is also going to be pointed with the heric, but you can tell the difference because notice what has happened here with respect to the triliteral root. There is a dogesh forte, that dot, in the letter. And that dot indicates that the noon of the nifal, and you can see that noon very clearly there uh, on the perfect verbs, that noon of the nifal was there for these imperfect verbs, but because it was vowless, it assimilated and a dogesh forte was placed in the following letter. And that dogesh forte indicates that that noon is still there. So then you come on down to the PL and the PUL and notice that in both instances, the imperfect performative is pointed with a simple vocal schwa, those two vertical dots underneath. Another thing that will set the PL apart, notice as well, you have that dogesh forte in the middle root letter. Then as we come on down to the HIFIL, notice that the imperfect performative is pointed not with a heric, not with a simple vocal schwa, but it is pointed with a pathak. And so that is what we have on our word. So pathak here, hifil, causative stem. Then you come on down to the hofal, the passive of the hifil, and the imperfect performative can be pointed either with a kibbutz, those three dots on the diagonal, or the kamates hatuf. This is not a kamates, this is a kamates hatuf because it is a closed, unaccented syllable. Then when you come on down to the hith pa'el, notice that you have the hith prefix, but the he has been replaced by the um, imperfect performative. So thus, our word being pointed with the pathak underneath the imperfect performative, that lets me know that this is going to be the hithil. So thus, here for Wayash came, I have then third masculine singular and it's hifil. So hifil imperfect third masculine singular of the verb shakam, which is basically to rise early. So, <laughs> or if I was in a word smithy mood, I might go ahead and translate it as earlying. But uh, so then he caused early rising. So notice here, then that would be the a while consecutive there. He, we get that from the imperfect performative. Caused, that's from the fact that this is going to be a hithiel stem. And then uh, shakam, which is the idea of to rise early. And so thus we have then he caused rising early would be the literal translation of that. Remembering that the while consecutive is going to flip the aspect from imperfect incomplete action to perfect completed action. That's why I move this into the past time there. Then we have, moving on down, Avraham. Well, Avraham, that's the name Abraham. And remember that when we're dealing with Hebrew, the verb has a tendency to come first in the clause followed by the subject. And so that is what has happened here. We have our verb. I'm going to go ahead and double underline it. And then we have our subject, Avraham. And this then indicates the he of the he caused earlying. And then we have baboker. And notice on this particular word, once again, this first letter, that first baith, that's going to be the baith preposition. Now, normally the baith preposition is pointed with a simple vocal schwa, but in this instance, it's not pointed with a simple vocal schwa, it is pointed with a pathak. That tells me that we had the article here, hey, with a pathak followed by a dogesh forte. But once I added the base preposition, the hey of the article dropped out, and then the preposition assumed the pointing of the article. And so that's why what remains of the article here is the pathak and the dogesh forte. So thus we have n, which would be the base preposition, the, which is that path I follow by the dogesh forte, and then boker is the noun morning. So this then is actually going to be a prepositional phrase, and you can see it is modifying our verb, 
most prepositional phrases are adverbial modifying verbs. And so it's modifying our verb telling when this action occurred. So, Abraham, so then Abraham caused early rising in the morning. And then we can come on down to the next clause here. And you can see that we have Wayahavosh F Hamoro. So notice here, once again, I've got that same wow consecutive, wow with a path back followed by a dogash forte. With the dogash forte going inside of the imperfect performative. And the imperfect performative here again is the yod. Now let's see, let's come back over here to our mnemonic, athon. So we have four imperfect performatives, olive, yod, tau, noon. With the olive indicating first common singular, the noon indicating first common plural, the yod indicating third masculine singular or plural, and the tau indicating everything else. That is second masculine singular and plural, second feminine singular and plural, and third feminine singular and plural. We have the yoth here, which tells me this is going to be either third masculine singular or third masculine plural. In order to tell the difference, I look to the end of the triliteral root, which in this case would be kabash, but I do not see any U class of vowel at the end. I don't see a shurik or a kibbutz. So thus I know then that this is in fact going to be third masculine singular. And then that leaves me then to determine what the stem is. So I know it's imperfect. I know it's third masculine singular. I see the pointing here underneath the yod, and that pointing is a pathak. Now we had just seen up above with the verb Wayesh came that the pathak underneath the yod here was indicating hifil. Be careful here. Because look at this letter. That letter there is the heith. And the heith is one of our strong gutturals the other one being the ion. So the kaith and the ion have a tendency to prefer pathak before and underneath them. So this pathak, while we might be tempted upon analogy with the verb that came before, we might be tempted to say that this is another hyphial. It's not because that is not the pathak of the hyphial, that is the pathak that is there under the influence of the chayth. If this letter were any other letter, if we did not have the chayth there, then we would instead have the hyric underneath the imperfect performative, and this would be our normal cal imperfect third masculine singular pointing it-o. So this here, is actually a cal basic action, imperfect third masculine singular verb of the verb chavash, which is the idea of to bind. So thus here, I will translate this as then, we get that from the while consecutive, he, that's from the imperfect performative, and then to bind, that's from the verb chavash here. But remember again, it's imperfect, so I might have translated this as he will bind or he is binding, but the while consecutive flips the aspect and makes the aspect no longer perfect and no longer imperfect, but perfect. And so thus I would translate it as completed action, then he bound. With the he here referring back to Abraham. Now, what is it that he bound? I'm so glad you asked that question. Notice that our next word, our next phrase, begins with this F. The F here is what we call a definite object marker. In other words, it indicates that the word to which this marker is bound, especially by that makaif there, that word is serving as the object of the verb. So here then, this word right here, hamoro, 
that is in fact going to be the object of our verb to bind. And this particular word, chamor, that's going to be donkey. But then notice here at the end of this, that O, that is what we call a third masculine singular pronominal suffix. So that is going to be a pronoun that is attached to the end of a word. So thus, chamor is going to be a construct noun, the third masculine singular pronominal suffix serving as the um, absolute. And we can actually, you know what, let's go ahead and do that real quick. We can go over those imperfect performatives. It's been a little while since we saw those. So thus, um, yes, pronominal suffixes. Pardon me one moment while I bring that up. So pronominal suffixes here. So these are pronouns that attach themselves to the end of words. And so thus, and notice that in the side column, you can see that it's divided according to the person gender number. So first common singular, second masculine singular, etc. So we have first common singular, e, second masculine singular, ika, second feminine singular, ake, third masculine singular, o, there's our pronominal suffix right there, third feminine singular, ah, Notice that mapik there in the hay, which indicates that I say it with a little bit more breathiness attached to the hay. And that helps to distinguish it from the uh, feminine singular noun ending. Then first common plural, anu. Second masculine plural, akem. Second feminine plural, aken. Third masculine plural, ahem, or uh, om in some cases, and then third feminine plural, hen or on in certain cases as well. So those are going to be our pronominal suffixes. And so this word here, you can see that we do in fact have hamoro, that o there, that holum while, that is going to be the third masculine singular pronominal suffix attached to the construct noun. And so thus, donkey of him, but the pronominal suffix being the absolute. It's a pronoun. It is therefore definite, which in turn makes the construct noun indefinite. So we have then the donkey of him. So that's what he bound there. Then as we come on down next, so we have wayakach et shene ne'aral ito wa'eth yitzchak beno. And so notice here wayakach. Wow, with the path back followed by a dogish forte, we are becoming very familiar with those wow consecutives. So wow consecutive there on the imperfect and the imperfect performative there being the yod. So third masculine singular again, no you class of vowel at the end. Now we do have the question of what verb are we talking about here? Well, very clearly I can see two letters of the root, the kof, and the kheth, right there. Now, most Hebrew words are built off of three letters, not two. So that tells me then that something has dropped off. The presence of the dot in the kof, that dogesh forte there, that tells me that something dropped off from the beginning, from the front of the word. So we're dealing with the first letter of the triliteral root that has dropped off. In this particular instance, the letter that has dropped off is the Lameth, because we're dealing here with the verb Lakach. So Lakach is kind of an interesting verb when we're dealing with Hebrew. Usually the most commonly assimilated letter in Hebrew is the noon. Uh, and assimilated just means that it is absorbed into the um, the following consonant. But in this sense, but the lameth, because of the fact that the N and the L sounds are very close in pronunciation, sometimes the lameth has a tendency to behave like the noon, and that's what it does in this particular instance. So the lameth here, when I added the imperfect performative. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to add the imperfect performative. So yilkach here. 
This vowel underneath the O, the hierarch, it is a short vowel. Remember that short vowels in Hebrew have a tendency to prefer closed, unaccented syllables. Most Hebrew words are accented on the last syllable. So again, this, where we have the yod, would be an unaccented syllable, which means with that short vowel, it's going to be closed. The lameth is therefore closing the syllable, which means that the schwa underneath it, those two dots underneath, they're silent. They don't make a sound. So our lama then is therefore vowelless. And so what it's going to do in this particular instance, it is going to assimilate. And a dogish forte compensative is going to be placed in the following letter. And that is how we get to this particular form, yakach. Now, the word lakach means to take to receive. So thus I have wow consecutive. I'm going to translate that as then. The yo then perfect performative, he, lakach, he took, uh, so to take, but then with the well consecutive flipping the aspect, and then he took, where once again, we still have the same person doing all of these actions. I know that because the subject has not changed yet. There is no subject. I know that because the next word here is that same F, that definite object marker that we saw up above. So we still have Abraham. He's doing the early rising. He's doing the binding and he is doing the taking as well here. So again, we have the same subject in all of these instances. Next, we have F, our definite object marker. So I know then that what follows here is in fact going to be the object of our verb, what it is that Abraham took. Notice here, our next word is Shene. This is a Hebrew number. Now, let me go ahead and introduce you to the Hebrew numbers. These Hebrew numbers, they are going to agree with the noun that they modify in terms of their gender. And so basically, but the basic numbers here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way down here. I'm just going to go through 10 right now. But we have Number one, echad. Two, shenayim. Interesting that two, the number two has the ayim ending, that dual ending, which makes perfect sense. Dual two, number two. Then we have the number three, shilosha. Notice what has happened here. We have an ah ending. We would associate that with feminine sing with a feminine noun. That's right. But when we're dealing with numbers, once you hit the number three, the genders flip. So this, this what appears to be a feminine number, it's going to be used to modify a masculine noun. So shilosha, three. Then you have arba'a, four. Hamasha, five. Shisha, six. What's interesting is that you can actually hear in that word where we get our word six. This right here over here is the basic form, sheish. You can hear six in there. Same thing as well with seven. So shiva, and you can see sheva is the basic form there. You can hear exactly where we get our word seven there. Shimona for eight. Tisha, nine. And then you have Asara 10 there as well. What we have here, Shane, this is going to be the construct form of Shanaim that you just saw there. So this is actually the num num number two, but it's in construct form. So two of, and then what follows is going to be the absolute there. So Ne'arao. Notice here, again, we've got our three letters of the triliteral root, the noon, ayin, resh, na'ar, that's going to be a young man, and then that al here, 
that's going to be the third masculine singular pronominal suffix. And you're saying, but that does not look like the third masculine suffix that we saw in the word for donkey. You're exactly right. The reason for that is this is the form that the third masculine singular pronominal suffix takes when it is on a plural noun. So thus, this is telling me that the word na'ar is plural. So we have more than one young man. So thus, this would be young men of him. And once again, because of the fact that him is a pronominal suffix and is therefore definite, it's going to make its absolute, its construct noun definite. So thus, we have the young men of him, which then, because of the fact that young men is definite, that also makes Shanae that construct noun definite as well. So then he took the two of the young men of him, and then we have ito. And this is going to be the, um, the preposition eighth with that o, third masculine singular pronominal suffix, so with him. So thus you can see, then he took the two of the young men of him with him, but he didn't just take two of his young men with him, he also took here. With eighth, Yitzhak, but no. So notice here, we've got another conjunction. This is not the consecutive here, those two dots under it, and the fact that it is attached to the definite object marker lets me know that this is a conjunctive. And then we have the definite object marker there. So, and, then we have Yitzhak, that's the proper name, Isaac, and then we have Beno. This here, you can see we have the third masculine singular pronominal suffix on the construct noun, Bain, so son of him. And that third masculine singular pronominal suffix is going to make the construct noun definite, the son of him. So he's taking with him two of the young men of him, and then he's also taking his son Isaac, just as the Lord said. And then, uh, this is a good, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the next, um, the next clause here, and then we'll stop for the day. But notice here, so we have, so thus, Notice here, wow with a path act followed by a dogesh forte. So again, that while consecutive, there's no dogesh forte there underneath the influence of the vocal schwa that happens. And, but the dogesh forte would have gone inside of the yod here. So third masculine, singular, imperfect. Notice that we do have the vocal schwa underneath the imperfect performative and a dogesh forte in the middle root letter. When we were looking at the verb stems, we saw that this goes with the PL stem. So this is a PL imperfect, third masculine singular of the verb baka, which is the idea of to cleave or to um, cut something in two. So we have then, then he cleaved, and this is an intensive action being the PL. At say, and so notice here as well that Sereyo ending that tells me that this is going to be in the construct and it's from the word eights, which means wood. So this would be wood of Ola, and Ola is going to be a going up offering. So basically, what was it that the Lord told him to do? He commanded Abraham to take his son and offer him for a burnt offering. And we can see here that he's taking Isaac and the makings for a burnt offering here. And so that then is what we're dealing with. And I will go ahead and um, stop there. And we will pick that back up the week after Christmas. I'll go ahead and I'll stop our recording.